And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for Rotation Proof Monday, kicking it off with Teamer Elementals to start with. We also have Demir Control, Boros Feather, and Sultai Lands as three other decks to follow this one up. Rotation Proof Monday is all about playing cards that are not going to rotate in about six weeks is whenever we have rotation. Uh, we haven't uh, heard the exact day for when it'll be on Arena, but I think it is about six weeks. So I know that a lot of the decks that I play, okay, all the decks that I play uh, are decks that are built with this standard format in mind. So we're using cards that uh, will be leaving standard. The sets that will be leaving standard in six weeks that are rotating out are um, uh, Ixalan. That was the first one. That's right. Ixalan, then Rivals of Ixalan, Dominaria, and Corset 2019. So those four sets will all be leaving whenever Throne of Eldraine enters the format. Uh, so we're going to have five sets in standard at that point. Standard always fluctuates between five and eight sets. And so we're going to, we have eight sets currently in standard. So we're losing four, but we'll be adding Throne of Eldraine to the uh, current sets that will be st staying in standard, which are Guilds of Ravnica, Ravnica Allegiance, War of the Spark, and Core Set 2020. So for this series, since since we're getting pretty close to rotation, uh, the like the number one thing that people ask about different decks are what can I replace this card that's rotating out with, or you know, do you have any rotation or like good decks that that uh, don't have cards that rotate out and stuff like that uh so that's that's what uh mondays are about now so we have rotation proof monday so these are the four decks that that i've built for today um if you like this series make sure you check out the other four decks that we made for last last week um i have a playlist on the youtube channel that's that's going to include all these rotation proof decks that already has the first four and i'll be adding these videos to it uh, last weekend we had like Esper Hero and some other good decks there. All right, so this one. So we got Elementals. So if you've been playing Standard, you know about Risen Reef, Omnath, Locus of the Royal, how good these Elementals are. I'm going with more of an aggressive approach for this uh, for this deck with, as you can tell, with like the Scampering Scourgers, your Cloudkin Seers, Thunderkin Awakener. Um, so, you know, like we're not, we're not like really ramping up a ton, you know, we're not playing land war elf and cavalier thorns and things like that, that, that just like really, really ramp us up a punch. So we're, we're trying to get as many elementals as we can in play and really kill our opponents with this Omnath trigger of dealing damage to any target. So we're trying to get lots of elementals with the scampering scourgers and, and, uh, awakeners bringing stuff back. Awakener, sorry, awakener is just a one, two, um, doesn't doesn't really bring very much back from from the graveyard i mean it can bring cloud Seer, risen reef and scampering scorger all right so I, I guess it brings a lot of stuff back so it can bring all those things back from the graveyard uh to play um but it can even bring more back if you start getting counters on it if you neoform i guess we can't neoform into an awakener can we because we don't have a one drop never mind omnath though that was that was the other thing i was thinking neoform plus omnath but it's really just omnath omnath whenever you play a land you can put a 1-1 counter on an elemental you control so if you start putting counters on your awakener then maybe you can start getting some other creatures back but i guess it's really just leaf kindred and omnath so uh, we'll see how much that actually really works <laughs> here um but yeah neoform what it's doing it's basically neoform's all about the risen reef and the omnath are two uh mythic elementals this is a mythic uncommon <laughs> basically in a mythic rare uh these two so like we're, we're turning our two drops into risen reefs and we're turning our three drops into more omnaths that's what we're really doing with the neoforms trying to get those uh we do have a good amount of lands here we got 26 uh so that like our risen reefs keep hitting land drops and everything and then the top end we have nissa that can just start turning those lands into into more elemental creatures we're not really using like the whole top part of Nissa too much of like adding a whole bunch of extra mana. I don't have a lot of forests in here. We got ten forests in here with the stomping grounds, breeding pools, and forests. And then we have Chandra at the top end because this card's very powerful as well. So that, that's our that's our top end are these two things. Um, so yeah, I didn't play Chandra three. Uh, maybe that could be an oversight. Maybe even like sideboard. Maybe I should have Chandra three over. I have, I have, you know, just like a lot of different spells. Um, Chandra three is, of course, perfect with Risen Reef. Absolutely perfect with Risen Reef with adding the uh, the two elementals. And I guess 
This is really not bad with Neoform either. Hmm. Maybe we should have some Chandra 3 in here. Do y'all think we should have Chandra 3 over Chandra 6? Chandra 6 is so good too, though. I want Chandra 3 in the sideboard. That's what I want. I just I want Acolyte of Flame in the sideboard. So, yeah, Flame Sweep is basically just for... Yeah, Flame Sweep is, is pretty awkward with, like, all these little things, but I... I would, I wanted it for the scape shift matchup because you know we don't want to play we can't play blood sun or alpine moon cards like that that are going to rotate out but flame sweep could um could kill a bunch of zombies so that's that's what i was thinking there with the with the flame sweep um we really don't need three veil of summers shocks in here for Shock's in here for vampires. We're going on the fly, changing the deck, getting a couple Chandra 3s in here. All right, fine. We'll, we'll just play the one flame sweep just to get him. How do you deal with the Dante Vanguard? You go around it. All right, so with these uh, rotation-proof decks, we're going to our traditional constructed queue, seeing if we can get to five wins before two losses. We're not necessarily going to have the best records with all of these decks because we are limiting the card pool to half of what's currently in standard. All right, and I'll update the deck list in Stream Decker here to change for that. Jackback with the resub here. Welcome back, Jack. Thanks for that, Teresa. My most favorite card in all of Magic, I would say, is Courser of Crufix. The Enchantment Centaur from Born of the Gods. Certainly like that card. So if we're playing against Aggro, we got Triple Lava Coil, and, you know, we'll be doing just fine. If it's not Aggro, it's not a creature deck, we are certainly dead. And then even if it is a creature deck, we'll be fine. But is this good enough? Maybe not. So I'm going to ship it. This isn't spectacular either. But we have a temple to scry. And going down to five is pretty rough anyway. I think I'm getting rid of Scourger. I mean, we could just get rid of second Omnath. But Omnath's so good. I guess we should get rid of second Omnath. That's not red mana. All right, we got two Chandra threes in the sideboard. That would be Chandra Acolyte of Flame. All right, deck list is updated. Back to the chat. Yeah, and we can also just block a Dante Vanguard. Yeah, like, you know, like a card like... Oh, wait, it's still in my hand. A Scampering Scourger is very good against a Dante Vanguard, making a bunch of little blockers. Oh, yeah, Knight of the Reliquary. I absolutely... Yeah, I love Knight of the Reliquary, too. What an under... That's... That's always just been one of the most under... Like... Like... Completely underrated cards. There's probably not... Like, that's that's a card that has won me many, many, many games of Magic. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and take tomorrow off, Thoy. How usually take like two days off a month. I'm uh, gonna go ahead and do that tomorrow. And I know I know like the next time, the two times I'm gonna be taking days off this month. 
going to be tomorrow and then the weekend, not this upcoming weekend with the MCQ, but the following weekend after that, the weekend of the 24th. I'll be taking a couple of days off that weekend. Uh, my friend and Prove your skills and I can um, teach you even more. Moderator on the in the stream, person's always in the stream. Boots to the head. He, he'll be in town for that weekend, again. And so I'm gonna take the weekend off. We're just gonna chill and play video games and stuff. Hmm. So, can we kill them? Is the main question. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yes, we can. We need more than these. The land shall conquer you. This scampering scorcher card looked pretty strong. No, August 15th's not a holiday as far as I know. I don't know of any holiday on the 15th. When that's this upcoming Thursday. Um, unless Throwback Thursday is a holiday. So we're playing against Blue Black Control. I guess we're going to want all the Chandras and the Vela Summers. We'll cut these Lava Coils. I should probably be playing the Gates too. Probably don't need Neoform as much against the control deck. So I'll cut those. And now we have one extra card. Could be Leafkin Druid. I guess this Chandra is really not doing anything except for like the middle zero. But that's fine. Probably Leafkin Druid, I suppose. Oh, Doc Nasty, the 15th's her birthday. Happy early birthday. So, yep, there we go. It is a holiday then. Oh, Deckmaster, thank you. I forgot something. We'll get Deckmaster up. Well, I'm glad I cut one of the Leafkin Druids. I got all the, these other ones that I don't want. All right, Deckmaster should be up and ready to roll. Yeah, Matthew, that Orzov list looks pretty good. I recommend getting Ugin in there. If you have an Ugin, Probably over the Venerate Luxodon. Don't need that card. Dispark is really good in the format. As far as removal goes. Well, I'm playing eight temples. It does give me some good scrying, but we're going to be a little bit slower. We don't have the buddy land, so we don't have Hinchland Harbor and lands like that. Hinchland Harbor and Rootbound Crag. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got Risen Reef. And the si There's no sideboard in best of... You're playing you're playing best of one for singleton. There's no sideboard, Matthew.
the brought back. Oh, and I think the bingo card also, or the bingo one also expired too, I think. As far as the codes go, but brought back expired. I don't really want to play this Leaf Kindred. Just gonna hold it in hand. Wait, if we draw a Risen Reef, we'll play the other one. We we just don't need it in play. Ah, that's some wrong button. All right, there we go. So I updated the command without having those other ones. Do that, does that still work? Perfect. All right, so what they do? They did disdainful stroke. It's rude. Risen Reef would make my whole hand look a whole lot better. But of course, they may just have instant speed removal for Risen Reef, though. Ah, oh, come on, Risen Reef. Eh, you're good enough. Witness the ties that bind us all. The land fights for us. Wow. Well, Nissa, very powerful. Nissa is very powerful. So my opponent used that ritual of set a little early. Or a little a little earlier on that ritual of set. Okay, so rot rotation proof Monday, kicking off with a win. Cram. I'm not a green player, but even I consider crafting Nissa. Yeah, it's a it's a heck of a card. Right there. So the main question is I could play Thunderkin Awakener on turn two, but then I don't I just have I'm playing another Awakener on turn three. I should probably wait and play Risen Reef on turn three and go from there. Um, that could be important to grab Omnath. Looks like this could be a combo matchup. Looks like Nexus. I suppose against Nexus, our most important thing to do is to get Chandra in play and get them an emblem as fast as possible. And so the way to do that, of course, is hopefully ramp with the Risen Reef. Let's get some lands here. Huh, I put the one, but it just didn't show up. That's weird. There. I just did a little space bar and little little glitch there. Alright, did not get land. We need like two more turns. Unclear if we'll get two more turns. So I could go double Thunderkin Awakener. 
or reef. I could go Thunderkin Awakener plus Neoform into a Risen Reef. That just gets me more triggers. But then I'm also not playing the Temple, so I have to hit get like two two on tap lands if I do that. So I think it's better just to go Reef. Where's our lands? There we go. So that I can... Because I want to play the Temple this turn. So that I can go Steam Vents Chandra next turn. To the library. To the library. Wow. Glad they said Wilderness Reclamation the first time, and the Nexus the second time. That's a bunch of Wilderness Reclamations. Hopefully we get another turn, and we can give them another emblem, and also do a lot of damage to them with Awakener, Awakener, Neoform for Omnath. Hey Morgan, and JB Woodward, good afternoon everybody. Hmm. I know I noted this somewhere. Amnesiac. So we'll see if we get another one. So what they they did? They asked for Callus dismissal. That their their win con. I guess. Ah, oh, thanks, Six Osaka. Thank you. Certainly, poss certainly possible and or probable that we do not get another turn, but it would be, be very nice if we did have another turn. I think you will find my notes helpful. Yeah, they're digging for their little win con. This emblem could get us there. It'll be kind of tough for our opponent to kill us in 15 turns. Does Callus Dismissal does it have to have a target? Yes, you do have to target a non-land permanent. Let me aid your research. So they have to like play their own thing and bounce it a bunch. They had two nexuses there. I'm excited about historic. New, new formats are always a lot of fun. Alright, so it doesn't look like we get another turn. So no, we, we are not getting another turn. So if we did not have... If they did not have the Chandra emblem, we would certainly be conceding. Like, we'd have no chance to win. However, they do have the Chandra emblem. 
So we have a little bit of a shot to win. It'll be close. I think we're still underdogs to win here. Ugh, that would've been nice to, you know, every turn. Yeah, I don't I don't think we're winning now cuz that's one. No, they're they'll be able to outpace one one emblem. Cuz theirs is going to grow. Like mine's just doing one damage a turn, theirs is going to grow each time, one then two, then three, then four, and so on, and that's just going to outpace me. Hey, what's up, Yager? I don't think they have any other win con besides that one Callus Dismissal. But Yager staying around 31 months. Keeping it going. That definitely deserves a whole lot of hype. Thanks so much there, Yager. The past is never forgotten. So yeah, this is This is over. They just do they just do that combo. Tamio picks up Callus Dismissal, attack for two, and they can even do it again here, they attack for three and so on. We're not like they're killing us before twelve turns. They just do keep doing that combo and then play Nexus. Alright, so we're good. gonna have to get another one in here. Some negates, ether gust, reclamation, tamio, that kind of stuff. Um, this doesn't even kill tamio. I mean, if they're trying to interact with me, I guess Vela Summer may do something. I'm not sure that it will. How do we kill them quickly? I needed one more turn. If I if I would have had one more turn and got them a second emblem and, you know, Neoform for Omnath, we, we definitely would have won if I had one more turn, but hmm. five turns is all we get against Nexus. Like this cloud concealer looks like it just doesn't matter, right? We'll just play Chandra instead of Cloud Concealer. Like that card just doesn't matter, right? Yep. Yeah, I have rotation proof lands and everything too. Yep. Yeah, that's what I do it on Mondays. Make everything rotation proof. The only only possible exception I'll do, and I didn't even do it for this one. The only exception I'll do is playing is putting Land War Elf in some green decks. That's the only exception. Uh, yep. Ooh, Electro Dominance. That is a good. That was a sweet card. But hey, wife, wifey Gate, what's up? I like your stream today. I go, hmm. Should I just go awaken her? Yeah, let's just go awaken her. I yeah, I I start at at uh, three, so like forty about forty minutes ago or so. That's a. Uh, that's why I start each and every day. Possible Chandra is better here. Perfect. That works out though. That's what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Would like to hold up Negate. I could play it safe and play Leafkin. But 
but I'm not doing very much. I could play it not so safe and go Chandra and just hope that one of my top two cards is an untapped land. Oh, that's risky, though. It's not the most risky. I'm happy as a hellion to start some fires. It's not like we lose if we don't hit an untapped Say hi land. To my fiery friends. Uh, tap land. All right, maybe no wilderness reclamation on turn four. <laughs> well, when you if you reveal it an untapped land off a risen reef, you don't have to put it into play. You can put it in your hand, so I would have put it into my hand and then played it as a land drop. So that's that's what I was hoping for. Well, geez, we're dead. All right, need to counter Tamio. Okay, maybe we're not. I guess I could just play Chandra. I was pla I was planning on going Omnath. No, it's still probably better to go Omnath. Omnath negate. Here. This just kills Tamio. Your aggression is noted. In this outcome. Yeah, this Chandra Acolyte, Acolyte of Flame card is pretty good. Hooray. And then the Awakened Inferno should end this. Oh, they're so cute. Man, where's our lands? I mean, we're we're winning this game, so I really shouldn't complain about these lands or lack thereof. Our twenty-six land deck, since we're winning. I was just gonna give him like I was just gonna do uncounterable Chandra, give him emblem. Yeah, a lot of ways to win there. All the neoforms and everything. So yeah, all our decks today are all rotation proof, including the lands and everything. Rotation proof Monday. Well, this hand's probably not beating Nexus, unfortunately for us. So definitely keeping one temple. Maybe I get rid of the second temple and hope we find a two drop. 
to help us curve out. But of course, if we don't have anything to play on this turn too, I would have preferred having that temple. Eh, we kind of do. Clockwork John. Thank you so much there. Oh, let me know how Bant Arcbow goes at FNM. That deck was a lot of fun to play the other day. Yep, this is the turn that we want negate. I think the wolf package is probably better than the angel package right now. But except for except for against like vampires probably if you have a lot of aggro then maybe going wolf package will be better. Okay, well looks like my opponent's just going to be playing around a gate so just play the Chandra. So I was thinking they have, they have just like Chemistry's Insight that they just get to to play. So I can't I can't sit there and do nothing while they Chemistry's Insight and draw a bunch of cards. So next turn, if we Nissa and can untap Breeding Pool, we'll have Negate available as well. Yep, I understand that life, wife too. That's how I, I'm usually a lurker as well. So, yeah, sit back, relax, all that. Ugh. Opponent played that very well. Yeah, they did have the insight too. The the problems without having any two drop. This is what happens when you don't have two drops? Thanks, daffodils. Yeah, this is a pretty neat rotation proof version of elementals. Would love to draw Chandra 6. Awakened Inferno. If we get another turn. Well, hopefully they're just in inciting. Nope. We are pretty dead. I know I noted this somewhere. Okay, good. They whiffed. Just gotta hope no more nexuses in the hand. And then we have to draw Awakened Inferno. Kind of do. I guess I should have ticked up first. Could have dealt one extra damage here. I was thinking, like, I just want to play the Omnath before my land because the counter, but I guess I need to take up first, too, though, to do one extra damage. Um...
Do not harm my scrolls. Matter. Rise, my elemental friend. Just gotta kill Tamio. More data will be needed. We're still not very likely to win this. So they could be at 13. If I would have just plussed up first. I don't think that really changes anything. Well. Actually, it does. Because if they're at 13, I have 13 damage next turn. But they're at 14. I don't have 14 damage. So actually, yeah, that does change things. I'm going to have to draw stuff, something to get to 14 damage. Yeah, we need to draw a land. So that could cost me. But it's also pretty likely that... We don't get another turn. Reclamation has Kanta. Let us see if your talents are worth casting. I think you will find my notes helpful. They named Biogenic Ooze? They have to have another Nexus in hand then. Which means we're dead. <clears throat> We can't whiff anymore. I got 30 cards. They have four Nexus and 30 cards. They get to look at 12 cards. They're not even naming Nexus. I gotta have another Nexus. Just in hand. And we're dead. Teaches me for not playing a bunch of cinder vines. So that's the good news. You can make that matchup a whole lot better if you just put four cinder vines in your sideboard. If that's a matchup you want to make better. Um, no, I haven't seen a thunder Thunderkin Multani interaction. What's what's the Thunderkin Multani interaction? Um that card's actually great. Oh Multani, see I was thinking Wildratha. I was thinking Muldratha. Sorry, Multani. I was thinking the wrong card. Well, if you're tired of Nexus, how's another Nexus? Oh no, this is is this Flash? Hmm. I'm not gonna have another two mana counter spell. Be famous last words there, but 
Neoform is really bad against counter magic because you have to sacrifice your creature as part of the cost of the spell, and then if they counter it, you're, you just sacrificed your creature. All right, so I attack with Thunderkin Awakener. I bring back Cloudkin Seer. But just for a turn, but they get to block Awakener. Of course, Veer Day. Yeah, you can always, you can always do that. Absolutely. No, not not too close right now. Random, si random sign up. Time white frilled mystics pretty messed up. So the the Risen Reef is going to be sacrificed anyway, so I can just sacrifice the Risen Reef and go get Omnath. But I don't I don't gain any like Omnath doesn't really do anything. I think it may be better. I kind of want to just sacrifice this Thunderkin Awakener to be honest. Hmm. And just go get another Risen Reef and get two Risen Reef triggers. I guess if I just wait, next turn I'll get a Risen Reef trigger with this. Hmm. It's a tough call. I'm gonna get another Risen Reef. Perfect. Perfect. Worked out. Perfect. Yeah, tie knot. I like doing the f the. Uh, full full Windsor. That's my favorite tie knot. That's what I do just all the time. That's what I always do. Yeah, sometimes the plan just comes together. That's right. All right, so we got Jeskai Flash here. Bant is the word that I meant to say. Bant Flash here. We got Bant Flash. Hmm. Well, Neoform was just awesome for us that game. But I'm not sure if I actually want Neoform. I'm going to take out Leafkin Druid and Neoform. Maybe kind of trim some of both. This is pretty expensive, but nah, I don't think I really want fry. I guess. See, the problem is, is I'm I'm most worried about the wolf, and fry doesn't kill the wolf, and lava coil kills the wolf. That's like the scariest card from these decks. But maybe we should still play it over those. Over Leafkin and Neoform. Yeah, Nissa. 
Nissa is very easy to counter, but Nissa is also just ridiculously powerful if she resolves. If she just can win games on her own, so it's hard to cut her. Um, Leafkin. Leafkin's the kind of card that, while it does speed me up, it's the kind of card that they can easily let resolve, and it doesn't do anything to help me win too much. You know, besides just another, add another mana. So I guess I wait till turn five before I play Risen Reef. So they, you know, they mold to five, but as you can tell here, they don't have any land drops, where I have like way too many lands. So the thing is, is like they're gonna have to start discarding here pretty soon if they don't draw lands, which doesn't look like they're drawing lands. So we're gonna do just classic control mirror, where when you have more lands, where you don't play anything. So I'm not gonna let them get value out of their cards, and like if they wouldn't have drawn that land there, they would have had to just go to discard. Because they're just sitting with all their counter spells. They, they can't do anything if you don't play stuff. But yeah, like we have just too many lands over here. We can kind of wait till we can. We can just cast a whole bunch of stuff in, in the same turn. The. The wolf is the. The thing that certainly hurts. That would have been really good for us if they would have bricked one more turn on a land drop. Having to go to discard. Alright, alright. We gotta we have to obviously we have to lava coil this ambusher. What do I want to start with though? Is that where I want to start, or do I want to start with Risen Reef? So we're gonna have Risen Reef plus negate, plus lava coil, plus veil of summer. All right, we got we got man, mana for all of that. We need to stop drawing all these lands though. Well, scry lands are good. Okay, so that resolved. Hmm. That's a problem. A wolf card is hecka good. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. You'll have to check in the store if these those these sleeves are pretty new. So I would I would expect them to still be around, but I I can't say for sure if they're still around or not. I guess I could play this card against the wolf, I guess. Play this instead of Fry. A wolf is... It's, it's easily the scariest card in the flash decks. It's the, it's the best card. You don't get why we didn't play Reef early with Negate and Veil? Because it allowed my opponent to use all that to use their mana and use their cards in hand. You know, if they would have if they would have missed the land drop for one more turn, they would have had to just start going to discard. But I, I would have let them play their cards. As you saw, all I had were like lands. Having a Risen Reef in play or not didn't when it changed anything there. We even just had more lands coming up. I didn't want to just allow them to get good value out of their their cards. I wanted just to have them be stuck with lands and 
in hand. And like, let's say we actually drew like two more creatures. We could have played, you know, like three creatures on one turn with like the Veil of Summer and Negate. And and then once we have those in play, you don't really have to play too much other stuff because we could have just, you know, killed them with those things where they would just be, they would just have all those other, those other cards would just be dead in their hand. Um, the So the coil is like our is an answer, of course, to the wolf, but it's not a great answer as we saw. I think I want three threats here. We haven't seen Tulsimer at all. I mean, it's possible my opponent's playing it, but I I wouldn't expect my opponent to have Tulsimer. From everything we've seen, I I think it's a less than fifty percent chance they have Tulsimer. Probably not much less, probably like 40, 45, something like that. What are they shocking in here for three mana? I don't know. Besides just like two drop plus like opt. I mean, it could be like Sinister Sabotage. Do I let them get Sinister Sabotage value on me? Yes. The answer there is yes. So, would I rather them counter Risen Reef or Cloud Conseer? Well, the answer is Cloud Conseer, but still Risen Reef's not a card we hold. Could be Absorb. Same thing as Sabotage. But they get a gain life. Would have really preferred to draw land here where I could play the Seer and have Aether Gust. Ceratops is, has. Shifting Ceratops has been a whole lot better than what I expected because the can't be countered part and pro blue have been a whole lot better than expected. I didn't expect that to be worth very much with everybody playing little Teferi, the the can't be countered, but that now there's like these flash decks because of the wolf. You know, I wasn't really, you know, that wasn't something that I was taking in consideration because that wasn't a thing yet. And so it it has been a a lot better than I expected. Before, nobody was playing counter spells because of Little Teferi, so the can't be countered didn't matter. The problem with playing Scourger is if I just play Scourger and then they just play Wolf, I could be dead to the Wolf. Or it'd be, you know, kind of difficult to beat Wolf.
Obviously, we can't. Splash. We can't um, negate the Frilled Mystic, so we have to just bait out the Frilled Mystic there. So they're at seven. Coming close to killing them with these Cloud Conceers. I kind of want to block, though, also. We've already seen Time Wipe from them. Not let them Time Wipe pick it up. kind of want to just block. Right on schedule. Hurry! And then, yeah, try to do two damage to him with this Seer and then get a Chandra Emblem on him. See what happens. Not even bluffing a wolf. White's a good addition to the Flash deck. Get to Fairy, Time Wipe. A little surprised, no. A little surprised we haven't seen any Seal Away. Seal Away seems like an awesome card. I'm Chandra, the Immolation Sensation. <laughs> no pressure. Click and stick, <laughs> don't refer to decks in that way. We got four, four turns here. Well, I'm fresh out of fuel. Hold that thought. Definitely looking good for us as long as they don't find wolves. I mean, we got this the scourger. Should do should finish this off, because they only have two mana, and we got negate and veil of summer, so I I can't really oh they got four mana that's true but still, I'm expecting this scourger to finish them off. They could have the wolf to block, or just a blocker. But still... Alright, so they're not dead dead. We're still doing good though. Hey, Daxter. Keeping on that six month streak here. Thank you so much, Daxter. Well, that's sub number six today. I was behind one. Y'all are awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, they're pretty dead. Let's see if they got any you know life gain over there. See if there is a Tulsimer. Hooray! This deck just feels like a, a normal standard deck. You know, like this doesn't really feel like we're playing a rotation proof deck, which is a really good, good feeling. So like it's, it doesn't feel like we have made card choices really to only have uh, rotation proof cards here. It seems like we're just playing like the normal deck that we'd want to be playing. 
Like besides like some mana base choices. I don't I don't know why my opponent didn't try to counter the scampering scorger. That's an that's an excellent question. I don't know. Ooh. Gotta find green land, but we got the scry. And we're on the draw, right? I think we're on the draw. Throne of Eldraine duels. I think that they will not be the other five temples. I don't know what they're going to be, but I, I'm taking the field over the five temples. A lot of people just kind of assume that we're getting the other five temples printed. I'm thinking they're not the other five temples. Hmm. This is probably pretty bad for us. Cavalcade's tough to beat. Especially when you only have one castable card. That one castable card is a good one, though. Splash. Yeah, it's... Whatever, the duels are... The duels are absolutely going to be the other five colors than what these five temples are. Because they like to keep them even. So the five dual... The five uh, two-color combinations that do not have temples in standard right now, those are going to be the, um, the colors that the duels will be in Throne of Eldraine. We just don't know what those duels will actually be. Oh my gosh. I have a lot of green sources in here. Right? We have 4, 8, Go get em, buddies. 12, 14, 16. We have 16. We have like 16 of like all of our colors, basically. Yeah, I just have 16 across the board of all three colors. How much is this? Do you strike up to variants, and how much do you accept before you look at mana base? Uh, always look at. I mean, I'm always counting. Like I counted up the colors before. Like I always look at mana base. Like that's something that, you know, I. Something I I count up the different colored sources and make sure it's something that I'm. That I think is acceptable before even playing the deck. And yeah, we don't. Like besides Nissa's over here at double green, but. You know, we need we need one green source, of course, to, to work with these, but we don't need like two. And I, th I think sixteen's acceptable for that. I wouldn't really want fifteen with Leaf Kindred, but sixteen's acceptable. We have the temples and everything too. That's just kind of unlucky what happened there. I'm not expecting that to happen too often. <clears throat> how am I beating how am I beating Chandra Acolyte of Flame so I need the other Lava Coil gotta get rid of you know like the two cards that we gotta get rid of are Spitfire and Acolyte of Flame the other cards aren't really gonna beat us too much I mean if they could have just a bunch of Cavalcade of Calamities honestly of course but that's the problem with Shock and Flame Sweep it's Flock <laughs> Shock and Flame Sweep Flock those two don't uh, deal with Spitfire and Acolyte of Flame. So I'm less interested in those cards. I'm more interested in Shock, of course, because Shock can go after Acolyte of Flame. In the waiting line.
Yeah, so I I guess I'm not exactly sure how to answer your question, Narinen. I guess it would be just that you should always be looking at like when games like that happen, don't don't just assume that it's nothing. Like you should always be looking at your mana base and seeing if you have enough sources and everything. So you should be doing 100% of the time. Which I do think 16 is enough sources, but just didn't certainly didn't work out there. I think attacking was probably a mistake. So I, I want to neoform this into Risen Reef. Which I guess Risen Reef will be a two-two. The thing is, like, do we do we need to have like this pro like to protect? Risen Reef? I don't know about that. That's a good card. Another Omnath? I haven't seen Steamkin in the Cavalcade deck I, that I can remember. I can't remember seeing Steamkin. Seether Gust just doesn't... There's just so many times that this card doesn't feel like a very good card at all. Because, like, what, what am I going to do with it? Just, like, put the Cavalcade back on top? And then they just draw it again? It's like, what, what did it really accomplish?
<laughs> yeah, this this saga is playing at the right time. Not dead yet, <laughs> but we're we are all but dead. I think my best chance right here is Omnath, I guess. Omnath kill Firebrand and then put a counter on Omnath with the Stomping Ground. Alright, Cavalcade and Nexus got us. Those are some pretty good decks. They'll get you. Um, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that matchup. I kind of feel like I should have boarded out a land. Maybe brought in a shock, like brought in the shock for a land. I feel like I should have done that. Um, I think that's what I regretted about that sideboarding. There. But whenever the, you know, like they were just, you know, they could easily kill Risen Reef and Omnath, and they killed those two things, and we just didn't have anything else. Um, and then Cavalcade on turn two, both games. It's pretty rough. Yeah, I guess, I guess I, I mean, how that, how that game turned out, like that game two, Flame Sweep would have been very good in that game, because that game they just did have their, all their little 1 1s. But usually whenever I play that deck, I lose to Chandra and Spitfire. And because I have, like, the creatures that handle, like, the little 1-1s. One we just didn't have creatures. We had, like, two creatures, and they killed them both. Like, and, so, and then they had all 1-1s. One they didn't have Chandra or Spitfire. So, yeah, how that game worked out, Flame Sweep would have been awesome. I don't know if that's how games usually work out, though. Because I've, I've definitely played, you know, Flame Sweeps against them before. And I have my Flame Sweeps, and they just play Chandra, Spitfire. You know, like they're like, you know, Cavalcade into Spitfire into the um, Acolyte of Flame. And like my Flame Sweep doesn't really do enough. I don't know. Uh, did I like Cloud Seer? Yeah, it actually was. It was good for us. Uh, you know, it did draw cards, which was nice. And uh, it beat down the Bant player, that flying creature. Um yeah, it was pretty good for us. It's it's not good against aggro. And, you know, it's just a 2-1 body. It's so small against aggro. The aggro matchup, that's that's a matchup that we're going to be pretty slow for the aggro matchup, to be honest. And the teamer colors, that's, that's just the real test with the teamer decks right now, is how do you beat aggro? Um... Like, one of my favorite things to do against aggro decks is, like, Entrancing Melody. But, of course, we're not playing that here with our Rotation Proof deck. Not having Land War Elves does slow us down. But, anyway, let's talk more about the deck. Uh, for a Rotation Proof deck, I did like how this felt a lot. You know, like, one of our losses, like, the the Model Red matchup, yeah, it's going to be tough. But one of our losses with Nexus, that's a, a match you can have a lot higher win percentage against if you just put cinder vines in the sideboard that's a card that's not rotating out that you can have cinder vines in your sideboard you, you can have a lot higher percentage against nexus and we were we were really we were pretty close to winning that anyway like the game one we needed one more turn and they were dead and we didn't have it we had five turns we needed six and we won game two and game three was pretty close you know it was like you know we had we activated nissa twice so it was kind of close but we were a little slow there in game three as well um and yeah nexus is rotating anyway but yeah so like you don't even have to worry about nexus after rotation anyway um but yeah pretty good thing here so the thing like these rotation proof decks you know this was two and two that's usually what we kind of go with these decks we don't usually have like really good records with the rotation proof decks because we are limiting our card choices and everything and and have like the mana bases that we that we are playing you know you're gonna see a lot of gain life lands and stuff 
Um, those usually hurt us. This three color mana base though is actually pretty good. As far as three color mana bases go, this was like as good as as good as you can get basically for uh, um, for this. I mean, you could play, see like Green Cavalier. Green Cavalier is a card you can be playing that helps out against aggro, I suppose. We're thinking about another card there because Green Cavalier does block really well, even though it's it's pretty expensive. Um, but yeah, so that's Teamer Elementals. Um, uh, Zizug, yes, I do like Rakdos aggro. And yeah, I think that's a deck that can be viable after rotation for sure. There's a lot of, a lot of good stuff in that deck there. But anyway, um, if you're watching this video later on YouTube, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. But thanks for watching Rotation Proof Teamer Elementals, and I'll see you for the next video.